Okay, this is a stripped down of a BW Raymond pocket watch. Very dirty. It's in a silveroid case or a uh, silver, silverine case actually. So it's uh, partially silver, I think. Uh, I'm going to clean the case up for you too and show you how that's done because there's fingerprints left over on here. So I could lift the prints and find out if there's anybody guilty of a crime. I already moved, removed the uh, balance here because I was curious as to whether the jewel was still there. So I got rid of the balance already. So I'm just going to move that over here so it's out of the way. <clears throat> and then I'm going to... Um, this is the, the uh, main screw for the balance. So this is an 1898, I think, pocket watch. So it's pretty old. Um, it is a BW Raymond. And it is a... Uh, adjusted um, it is a uh, railroad grade watch so which is kind of cool so I'm just gonna just strip this thing down and have a look at it I gotta clean it because it's just gummed up like crazy it's got a couple cleaning marks on the inside uh, where the watchmaker has has cleaned it um, but um, I don't believe I removed the other screw, so there is a screw missing. Um, thank God I just got a whole bag of pocket watch screws in the mail. It cost me a lot of money. It cost me like 25 pounds UK for these, which is not cheap. So anyway, I remove this first. Take the uh, lid off of it. Crystal. Seems to be nice and smooth in this case, so it's a... Uh, See all the rust and stuff there, corrosion. Get rid of all that, no issue at all. And then set this thing to uh, should be able to pull that out and set that to 12 o'clock, and just remove the hands. Um, just gonna put it down on top of the uh, case here while I remove the hands and get rid of those hands, baby rid of those hands so set of hands here it looks like it's the face is beautiful actually it's clean as hell so so there are the hands um, just remove the hands and put them out of the way put everything out of the way like I've said before because you'll end up stuck to you and I learned that lesson a long time ago so a lesson I want to learn again. I think I'm good here. I think I'm good. Let's see, can I jam this piece of paper underneath? Do I really need to? Just remove this baby hand here. This looks like smaller than it's supposed to be. There we go. Put that over here and push this back in. That seems to work quite fine. And then this should just fall out. And it is. I think it's just falling out. There we go. Let's move that case out of the way. And there you can see the inside of this movement. Um, there's no dust cover on it, strangely enough. But uh, now I did, I did put some pressure on the uh, mainspring. So. I have to figure out how to relieve the pressure from the mainspring on this thing because it's a pretty big pocket watch. I don't want this thing uh, kicking back at me. So there's usually a lever here that, that I need to poke in or something. And um, even I think this did. It looks like it did have a wraparound dust cover on it because there's the edge there and the edge there. And usually there's two pieces of two leaves that go around. And it is now missing those. So if I can find one for it, I will. But anyway, this uh, I may be able to push in this hole with a needle. Sometimes that works to relieve the mainspring. Let me see if that if it does anything. Oh, yeah, it does. There we go. See? Little tiny hole. you got to know what these holes are for when you... You're like, okay, there's a hole. The heck's this hole for? Uh, there we go. So that's pressure's off the watch. Always good to have a needle around. I gotta remember to 
put one of these this back in my lathe. <laughs> anyway, and I got a pad here, which is really soft, so I can do a lot of my work on that pad. Um, I think I will take the face off first, though, before I start farting around with things. And we've got some face screws here that I need to remove. It shouldn't be too difficult. Just loosen those up. And I don't bother taking them out. I just loosen them up enough to uh, enough that I won't have the face. Uh, the face can come out, and the the dial pins are loose. Um, uh, dial feet, actually, is what they're called. So this is just coming right off. So clean it up later, and out comes the uh, hour wheel. Out comes the minute wheel, and that's a very nice mechanism there, if you can look at that. I've seen this one before, actually, in another watch I was fixing for a friend, and it had the exact same mechanism, which is, and this one here is in mint condition, so there's no big issues here at all. So, that's that, and then I can now put this down in a movement holder, and check and see, make sure that the... Uh, that the focus is good here that you guys aren't getting pissed off because you can't see anything because the focus is shitty. Just hang on a second till I get my other glasses on and make sure I've got decent focus. So let me just open up my camera focus for a second and have a look at what, whether that focus is good or not. I think that's pretty good right there, I think. Yeah. That's set at 23. Um, for some reason, with this camera, if you hit automatic, it, it always focuses and then unfocuses really quickly. So, so first thing I'm going to do is take out the mainspring barrel, uh, and then uh, see. Again, this is hasn't been probably serviced in a long time. That said, USA. So it says USA here and it says 17 joules Elgin or Elgin. It's funny there's a blued screw here and there's just a normal screw there. And this is, I got like lots of screws so I'm not too concerned. I can replace the screws quite easily. So uh, I'm going to be too, cl too clumsy here. And I always pull the barrel up somewhere where where it's not visible, so in case it scratches or something, there's no issue. So as you can see, that is a high-end cap for the barrel because it's got the back cap here, and that's where the dust cover would go over. So if I can find another dust cover, I'll put one in there. So this should just pop out, hopefully. And, and then I always take a picture just in case I screw something up. So. There it is there, and look at that. What the heck is that? See that? That is interesting. I don't think I've ever seen something like that before. No, that's kind of weird. Um, I may want to take a photo of that too, in case something goes ping and I can't get at it again. <clears throat> I could always reverse the video though, couldn't I? So that's that. I'll take the barrel, the uh, mainspring out of the barrel later on. And then just let me remove the main plate here. So the thing with these watches here is, this is loose. These watches here is that these uh, full plate movements are so hard to get back together again. They're just so touchy. It's a full plate PIA, right? If you know what that means. So it's a beautiful movement though. I just need to do some work on the case. So, well, the uh, parts are in the uh, wash machine. I can do some case work, perhaps. Lift that straight up. Leverage my thumb to do that. And then grab this with the, uh, this, and go straight up. There we go. And if you look there, you'll see that the uh, pallet fork and the uh, escapement are kind of stuck in there. I'm also going to take a photo of that because that's kind of tricky to put back sometimes. So just so I can refer to it quickly. And uh, 
and then I can remove the uh, pallet fork from here or the escapement rather and the pallet fork as well is that going to come out? It's kind of gummy too oh there we go it's kind of popped out there there it is there and then I stripped down some wheels I think I took the picture of the wheels but probably not necessary but done so many of these I think I can remember which where what goes where so that's a wheel and then there's another wheel and there's a center wheel a big center wheel I can't take that out without removing the cannon pinion so let's flip this over and see how hard that's going to be sometimes this is a bugger to remove let's see if it's the case this time to get my handy dandy cannon pinion remover tool and then put that over the top of this and have a look at what I'm doing here maybe jaws of death that was dead easy just fell out so another wheel there and then I gotta grab the cannon pinion here there it is there, and it's got another gear in the center of it, which is kind of odd. This is a high-end movement. I can tell by the uh, the way it's built. And there we go. Um, I may or may not take this train apart. I usually just wash it down, and then everything evaporates, and then re-oil it. And I basically, I could do it, but it's not. None of these parts actually contribute to the amplitude of the watch. They, uh, they need to be oiled and such. Um, really it's getting an eye on the jewels and making sure they're clean and I've cleaned everything there and there's no leftover gum anywhere that uh, would cause a problem. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of little springs here too in, the, uh, in this, but this looks fairly clean. Looks like it's been serviced. Um, uh, it doesn't look dirty at all. Even the jewels look fairly clean. Uh, the jewels on the top plate, though, look pretty dirty, these ones here. But I will wash. So stand by for washing. Let me get the case for a second and just show you something before I get into the old laundromat routine. So if I take this case back, which looks pretty crappy right now, and I use this, it's called Peak. I put a little bit of peak in there and let me just uh, show you how that works put my hand removers away here oh man and my bench keys and let's get a little peak out here and I'll just put it right on the silver and well, that's what that looks like and that is kind of what this looked like and if I were to peek that as well, you'll see the uh, you'll see the uh, difference in the uh, in this part too. So I just hold that, just move that bottle of peek over to the way, so I don't do too much peeking. And then I'll move this out of the way here, and I'll just show you how this works. And I don't know if this will corrode the plastic it probably will so again you gotta watch how much stuff you put on and rinse it down after with uh, with uh, alcohol recommended to do that so and I've got some in the middle here and I don't want it because I think this stuff will will corrode or will dig into the plastic here and and I will get uh, a lot more crap than I want so, you see it's taken off the, uh, the corrosion there, so it's almost all off. And I'll just show you the night and day here, and then I'll do the rest, you don't have to watch me do it. So, there, look at that. So that's what it ends up looking like, and that's what it looked like. So it goes from ugly to beautiful. It's amazing. I'm going to pause and then I'm going to do the rest. There, I've done the whole uh, crystal here all the way around the rim. And it looks really good. 
Um, and then I've got the next thing I've got to do is just polish the crystal itself. It looks like it's a plastic crystal, so it must have been replaced years ago because I don't believe they had plastic crystals back in 1890. So, but I can I got this poly watch stuff here that's pretty good on plastic crystals, but you got to really spread it out and rub it in and then keep going otherwise it it actually dissolves the crystal and it looks terrible so you got to keep working on it for about two minutes of crystal polishing so i'm doing that right now i guess i can't turn the camera off or i'll this stuff will go solid and then i'm screwed so it's uh, as you can see it's working pretty good you just work it in and it gets rid of all the scratches because the plastic just melts onto itself or melts into itself and and then there's no issue left so so you get that down like that and then it looks pretty good there so flip over to some clean stuff a clean area of the cloth and then wipe that down and get all the edges here and then if you can see that at all, you'll see that that is uh, pretty nice looking. That is like a completely recovered crystal on the outside. It's smooth as heck. Now I could uh, lay some paper down here and see if I can do the inside of the crystal as well. I'm just going to wipe it down with my cloth here because I don't know whether... I don't think it needs poly watch because it wouldn't be scratched on the inside it just needs to be cleaned up a bit so find part of my rag that there's no chemicals on and this is a piece of cloth lint free cloth used for actually uh, um, working on cl cleaning crystals and stuff and if you just hold this lightly like this and it rocks if you hold it too tight and you go to the edges then the crystal could pop right out although I can it's not that difficult to put back in again so there we go that's pretty clean right now that's uh, looking good so it's two pieces of the puzzle the third piece of the puzzle is this baby here it needs some work as you can see it's corroded there and it's corroded here and so I'm gonna go at this again with the uh, with the peak this stuff worked great you just use a little bit of it and then you just work it in and I didn't put my glove back on I should have but too late so and then take a piece of clean cloth and wipe it off and you'll see that it's uh, recovered the, uh, the edge Get rid of all the corrosion that was from years of someone doing like I'm doing right now and putting fingerprints in the darn thing so so it's a uh, this peak stuff is great. I can't remember where somebody told me about it, and I uh, I get it up here in Canada from Canadian Tire. But you just go online, I'm sure, and you just go to Amazon or something and hit Peak, and you'll you'll find the movie Twin Peaks or something or the series. So I just do that, and I could use a Dremel tool and and go around the edges with it and stuff but this is doing it by hand gives you a little bit of a feeling that you're getting this thing done nicely so so that's pretty much it just a little bit on the top here clean that off a bit and then the other side and then you can do the bale as well here on the top just to get rid of corrosion on that and and then the other side as well just clean it all up nicely that way the movement this beautiful uh, railroad grade full plate movement will look exceptionally nice sitting in this case that's been cleaned up nicely right I'm gonna have to go to dinner later so I better not I better clean my hands up so anyway, so that's fairly clean. There's a little bit of work involved in, in making sure it looks good, but that is 
pretty good there. So if you look at that, look how shiny that is compared to what it was before. Um, it's night and day, baby, night and day. See that? I can see myself. So that's that. And then the last thing to clean, I'll just put that aside over here. The last thing if I'm going to cl be cleaning today is the is the face and the best way to clean the face is to use good old C1A1 Rotico. So get a piece of Rotico out. This one's probably pretty dirty. I think it was used for pretty much everything. So stretch it out, bend it back, look at the face in the light, and then just wipe it down nicely, like so. This face is gorgeous for its age. Oh my God, there's no cracks in it at all. Um, and it's Elgin and it's uh, it's actually gorgeous. And the lettering is mint, so there's no issue there at all. And you can look at it and see if there's any prints. It doesn't look like there's any prints. You can wipe the inside down, but it's not really necessary. But and that's the face. So that's looking pretty good. So just put the face in there like that and put that aside so now scrub a dub dub in the tub 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 for the movement <clears throat> so what i do what i gotta do there is clean this out because this is from the last movement so I'll be back uh, i'm gonna put the top plate in here and just soak it down with lighter fluid and i'm gonna use a lot of lighter fluid because i'm down to the end of this can here because after i do the plate i can uh, throw all of the gears and stuff there and there and then get on with that so there's my brush i got a couple of brushes here so i make sure i use one that doesn't lose a lot of hairs so anyway i'm going to put the glove back on i should actually just get a new glove because this one's been beat the crap but let me put my glove back on for a second here Ooh. 26 minutes already. Holy jeez. I'm going to bore you guys to death. So just do the jewels really quickly. Anything that's gummed up. And, uh, and it looks like the top plate had lots of stuff that was gummed up. So, and then do the top part. Just put my, uh, my toothpick there. And then go through this. The uh, swimming. That's good enough. And then I peg out the holes with uh, my pithwood pegs. And not the pithwood, but the pegs. So I peg the holes out. And after I've pegged the holes out, I I commence. That's a uh, old school. Eh? I commence to uh, cleaning them with the pegs and then the peg wood and then after I peg it out it tip it tri 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 typically I just splashed lighter fluid all over me but that's fine um, I will uh, use Rotico as well just to clean up the faceplate and get rid of any fingerprints that might be on there and any leftovers and any of that so I will leave this plate to dry for quite a while because I'm not adventuring inside to change the uh, or to clean the gears on the inside even though I could, I don't want to. So there you go. You can get mad at me and write all kinds of stuff. But this is, uh, I do oil this after I'm finished. Um, uh, and I could strip it down. This is my movement. So if I was doing this for somebody else, like a friend, I would take all this apart. One thing I do worry about is that these springs that are here, these things here can go. And when these things go, uh, you're, you're going to... Uh, you're screwed, basically. There's not a lot you can do about replacing it. But you can see how much dirt is already being collected from this movement. As I throw the gears in for the bath. Get in there and swim, baby. Get in there and swim. And I get these. I just usually have the, uh, the pinions on the bottom so that they, uh, they get clean nicely. Now I... I've, there's some debate on whether to do a pallet fork or not, but I'm going to do it.
because the shellac, I think if you have it in there a long time, you could have problems with the shellac. So I usually do this, and then I run over and rinse it down really fast in the bathroom without losing it. I didn't even turn my video off, so so I just took that and rinsed it off so that the uh, lighter fluid doesn't keep eating into it. Um, although there's some debate whether there's an issue there or not. Um, I think I'm on the side that the lighter fluid will corrode or will eat into the uh, shellac holding the jewels for the pallet fork. And then if that happens, you're, you're kind of screwed because you're never going to be able to... Uh, You'll have to get another pallet fork. Actually, that's that's a lie. You just have to reset the jewels on the pallet fork, so which is okay. I thought I saw a broken tooth there, but I think it's okay. No broken tooth, and I hold the middle of the the spoke with a toothpick, so it's pretty loose. And I use the brush, so it doesn't put any any uh, additional pressure on the uh, on the components. Because I don't want these to uh, bend or break, especially that second wheel that I showed you in a past video of me replacing that wheel with my crazy technique. So that's that. That's pretty good. And I got a little bit of paper uh, room left on my watch making paper here. I can see some hairs let, letting go on this brush. I got to get better brushes, I think. Because you don't want hairs to be inside the movement. That's not good. Uh, and I gotta put this baby in for a swim as well. Gonna... And while I'm at it, let me grab the the hour wheel and the minute wheel and throw these in the bath as well. And the cannon pinion. Oh, look at that. Cannon pinion thought he was gonna get away with it, eh? So nope. So do that. And there we go. And that's pretty good. I might assemble this and see if it works and then get do the mainspring after. See if it uh, needs some cleaning because I think I've done many, many mainsprings in my videos. So so that's, that's that, which is nice. Group that over on the side. And these guys here need a bit of t TLC here. So I just do these ones really quick. And do the hour wheel quick. I was actually amazed how fast the cannon pinion came out. But it's a crazy ho hobby being a watch repair guy. So it's unique. If you talk to your friends, not a lot of them are into watch repair. A lot of guys are into collecting watches, but because it's the only bling you can kind of wear. Um, but it takes quite a few years to get competent at repairing watches and cleaning them and learning all the techniques of doing these sort of things is not easy so uh, let me think should I take this should I take the uh, mainspring out right now I just I'd really like to see if this watch works before I dive into the mainspring so yeah I'll leave that alone and I'll also do the uh, I'm gonna clean the uh, balance after as well so I'm just gonna let these things dry out and then Come back for some reassembly. So now what I do is I peg out all of the holes. So I dried this one out a bit, and it'll dry up some more later. But when you're pegging out the holes, um, start with the big, the big hole, the the, the uh, center wheel jewel, and then work your way over to the smaller jewels, and it actually forms the uh, the peg the peg wood gets formed by the jewel holes so if you work your way over from big to small then um, you can feel the uh, the peg wood getting into that jewel hole so these jewels are in pretty clean they're I'm looking at them sideways and I what I do is I take the back of the peg wood and I just wipe around the outside of the jewel so it's uh doesn't have any leftover crud on it 
because the wheel itself will rest on that jewel so the the uh, the jewel should be clean because the uh, the shaft for the wheel where it ends and before it starts the pivot will rest on that jewel so looks like there's a little corrosion around these two so but don't want to use my my peak on this so I'll get at it maybe I'll use some peak on this I don't know I'll get at it after with uh, with the right stuff so you want to make sure the plates these rather large plates the uh, the jewel holes are properly pegged out um, to get any crud out of there and then I do dab my rotico on that after so just to let you know as well when you're doing the jewel holes here make sure you look in the hole after because you may have left some pegwood in there if it snaps off on you and then that's even worse so I gotta take this off and clean it and these are not too bad on the top but I'll just wipe them down after and there does look like there's corrosion here these guys are all kinda should be gold but they're not so I might take a little peek and then go and rub those in just so it looks good and this jewel here I think I gotta punch this guy out and, and then unscrew it and then punch it out the other way and then push it back in after to clean the top of that so that's pretty easy to do you just have to unscrew the top right here just get a screwdriver out and and go like this and what I like to do is mark it like there's a little needle place where you're supposed to be able to take the uh, put a needle in there and then remove the, uh, the cap jewel but what I like to do is mark it so I know that this is the side it goes in um, but I find that putting a needle in there to remove the cap jewel works 0% of the time so when you're uh, looking for my tweezers here so when you're moving the screws here again just bang my head be very careful because you could lose these screws so easily so you just want to uh, you want to put them somewhere that you're not going to get stuck to your hand like I said before so that one came out that's the one on the left and the holes here put that in my little center place and then the one on the right if I'm lucky the radical will pick it up and it did so that's the other trick for removing a screw is use a rotico and then just put that in the center so it's out of the way and now i've got this jewel that theoretically will i should be able to wedge it out but i've never successfully i think very rarely am i able to do this so sometimes you approach it from the where the screw was and you can rotate the uh, screwdriver like twist it and the cap will come out oh, this looks like it might move out oh look at that it's my lucky day today there we go and that is really crudded up in the middle there's like a lot of crap in there so that definitely needs to be cleaned so what I can do just move that out of the way again like I said everything gets moved out of the way is you can take your pegwood here and just go in circles to get rid of all of the all of the leftover stuff that was on that jewel and it'll absorb some of that like that I could take this out of its fitting as well but no need to do that and then after you've done that if you're lucky enough you got enough pegwood on the other side to go through that hole and then you can just yeah look at that I pushed it out whatever it's pretty loose in there so I can still peg it out though just stick it there and then just put some heat on it and then I like to actually dab the rotico in it on it too so I just hold it hold it with my tweezers like that and then get the rotico in there to get rid of any crud that's left over like so like that and then I can flip that over and rotico the other side even though I I pegwood it did it, it just get the radico as a point a point and then just get some of that stuff off there there we go so now that can just jump right back into the movement 
so and that just should there's a lip there so it should just sit in there with the lip there and just go down in there and I think it's yeah there it is so that's in the movement like that then I'm going to grab the cap which is really old and I'm going to scrape the top of that cap with my pegwood again and let me just move this out of the way so I can show you how this is done I need to change my mat too because my mat's getting super dirty in this and you don't want the dirt to go into the there so all I'm doing is cleaning the top of the jewel with the pegwood and getting rid of this the leftover oil that's dried up and then I, I always look at it at an angle so I can see whether if it's shiny that means that I did it and that just you can self tell by the reflection and then I just rub the uh, radico on the top of it as well and then I want to put some oil on that before I put it back together so grab the oil and I'm going to use 9010 on that so now there's a couple schools here I should be throwing the oil on top of this but I tend to lose it every time I do that so I'm just going to put the oil on top of the jewel here all right that's perfect a little tiny circle of oil in there and then now I can take the uh, this jewel here and remember last time I had it this way and I made a small mark on the top of that jewel and let me see if I can find that mark when I yeah there's the mark so the mark is on the outer side and then I look where the mark is on the top here and I can see it there so if I line those two marks up I can tell where this where the uh, the cap needs to fit so I just put it on like that and nudge it over like so and then if any luck it falls in they never fall in place you just have to use some pegwood or use something to push it in so if you can get a flat piece of pegwood great if you can't just grab a stake from your staking set and make sure it's bigger than the jewel itself and just push down like I just did so and it looks like it's in there nice and flat so that's good and then I have to do screw one and screw two so I just grab that like that and I demagnetized my screwdriver earlier today because it was picking up screws and that's one and if you you just snug it in if you uh, if you do it too tight uh, you can strip the plate because these plates are made of like nickel I think and you will strip it with the screws because the threads and these screws are really thin so and this is there we go so that's done and ready and these are pegged out and this is done and I'm sure this is dried by now but on the inside um, I'll give it a couple more puffs but I'm pretty sure it's dried because it's a uh, lighter fluid and it dries super fast it doesn't collect anywhere it doesn't leave any residual crap on it and you can um, actually oil do some oiling too so um, I know there's there's some oils oiling I want to do with these gears here so and the thicker the gear the thicker the oil so if I just dab a couple of blobs of oil here on this and on the wheel here that'll transfer to other areas of the uh, watch and the winding mechanism here grab some oil in there and that's I can't remember the name of that oil but it's the thick stuff and just put this aside and now I think I'm ready to reassemble this puppy dog and can I do it without photos I don't know maybe maybe not I need a movement holder there we go there's my movement holder so I'm gonna look really quick because I want to know the order of the wheels going in uh, somebody from work wants me to call them but I don't want to do it right now because I'm in the middle of this video so center wheel is first center wheel is first 
that goes in like that and then the second biggest wheel goes in second and it goes in like this over the top and come on there you go and this is the second wheel and should have really plunged this one into uh, a little bit of pith wood here I'll do the tops but these things are pretty clean I brush them off but it's a good idea to plunge them into pith wood so that goes right here that goes underneath actually so I need to lift this up put this underneath and I might as well plunge the end in. I got a little piece of pith wood here that I use and I can plunge this in there too to make sure it's good and the end as well and I pretty much cleaned it up though so not too concerned so that's that's that I'm looking for the hole here come on Margaret come on Margaret where's the hole oh, there we go so that's that so that's in and then I need to put the uh, I think the next step is to put in the uh, I'm gonna put the mainspring in at the end but this is the tricky part so I got me a pallet fork here right I'll pith with the pallet fork here and the pallet fork goes in um, I'm gonna look at the picture but it, it goes in with the lip out so and it tucks in underneath that so what I'd normally do is I will put this pallet fork in into here and I'll use a really small piece of rotico to hold that in place because it has to go underneath here so this part here see if I can turn this around like that and it goes in this is tricky stuff gotta get my other eyepiece out of the way here this goes in right here like this so it goes in underneath and then it sticks in like that so that's actually in place right now and you gotta make sure it's between the banking pins on the end here there's two banking pins right there so that goes in like that and what I typically do is I'll take a very small piece of of Rodico and I will stick that down on this side and you gotta put the pallet fork back in the hole again I guess is that in there? yeah there it's in there now oh I keep lifting it up Jesus Ricky so that was my trailer park boys because the Rodico just lifts the stuff up which is which sucks so just put that in place like that come on get in there again doing this stuff under camera under video under duress is not easy so I'm farting around with this thing here okay there it's now in the hole now if I lay this over the top I don't need such a big piece hold it in place maybe while I do this I'll just push down on it a bit and then I need to press this stuff down onto the plate so it stays on the plate it's not good to do it with one hand I'm telling you I need like four hands and then you could use a screwdriver but I'll use my so you do that and press it onto the plate lightly there we go it's good on this side and then it's good on this side so there we go so that's stuck in place and then I look at it to make sure it's straight up and down so I look at it at an angle and it needs to go just push the other side a bit so it's there we go now I can put the uh, escapement here in place and the pallet fork goes right there so I think this goes on like this can't remember 
it's got to go, I think it was underneath this wheel actually. That kind of sucks. So I think it goes in like that. Just do this, come on, get in there. These are real finicky. Plus if I wasn't recording I'd be right in there with my face and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. I'll go in there now. Like this. There, it's in there now. So that's there. So now, um, I don't believe we've got any more pieces i got to put in. So now I take the plate here and I'm going to put it on top. And then I'm going to put some screws on it before I even uh, get this thing going. So this goes on top like that and we just rest that on top with luck it just everything falls in place but that never happens so let me just see what's i just look at the top and then look straight down and then pray so and then go straight down on this thing and where the holes are line those up with the line the plate up where the screw holes are and then line everything up and then go straight down and then there we go. So, I don't know if these the uh, the pivots are through the holes. So what I do is I put the screws in place and don't tighten them hard. And then I'm able to play with the pivots until they find the jewel holes. And you play with the big, you pay with the ones that are not fitting first, right? So the bigger ones. And then you play with the other ones after. So I just put these screws in this technique is I think it's my technique but it works so I have a bigger screwdriver here it's 51 minutes on this video hope you guys enjoy this someone wrote a comment the other day saying I really enjoy your videos I watched the whole movie and it's great um, and believe it or not my wife actually watches these movies too sometimes so, so I'm putting the uh, screws in where the uh, mainspring is plate is on there as well, um, even though they don't need to be in there, just so I can play the old pivot game. Because I uh, this one here is a little bit tougher to put in, so I'm going to back that out because I don't want to force anything. So maybe I'll put it here and have a look at what way it fits here. And let me just. Put that in there. Yeah, that's much better. The other one had a little bit of attitude. You know why? Because I think I was putting it in the wrong hole. I'll put the blued screwed here for now, which is like, what the hell's this one doing in this group of screws? It's like a, it's an immigrant. It's an immigrant screw. So don't tighten up too much here. I loosen it up a bit because I'm going to do the play with the plate game. There we go. And then I grab my play with the plate thing, pick it up, and then go nudge, nudge, nudge. So I'll be back. You don't want to watch that. A lot of swearing going on. So when the plate drops on one side and a pivot goes through a jewel, I tighten the screw up just a bit. Not a lot again. I just, I don't even snug it up. I just tighten it and then I let it back a bit so it's loose so that there's no pressure on the pivots at all. And then I can look underneath the movement and see what's what's touching and what isn't. Oh, there it just went down again. It looks like all of the pivots just found their way in. So I'm going to tighten this down some more. And I'm going to look at the pallet fork because that's the one that uh, I'm not sure is in yet. So I'm going to tighten this down. And tighten this one. That blue one is crappy. That's good there, and that's good there. And then I'm going to look at the pallet fork and make sure that it found its home. I just have to nudge it from the inside and make sure it's got it's in there. And I think it is actually. So I can what I can do then is is I can pull out the rotico from the middle there, which is helping me hold that pallet fork in place. I just pull that out, 
there's the Rodico and that's a great little trick by the way I, no one taught me that one I invented that one myself after swearing too much to put plates on I'm getting pretty good at putting these plates on I think it's just practice so now what I want to do is just to make sure everything works is I'm going to put a little pressure on this on the center wheel and see if the uh, if the pallet fork snaps back and forth without the mainspring I just can't remember which way this goes but Oh, nothing's happening there, so I'm going to check and make sure that all of the pivots are, are where they're supposed to be. Let's see, pivot, pivot, pivot. I think I got them all. Yeah, the pallet fork pivot's sticking through there, no problem. So I just maybe need to put more pressure on this uh, on this uh, mainspring to. I just can't remember which way it goes, left or right. Try the other way. Maybe. that looks like it snapped up oh, there we go that is snapping now so the pressure is this way not the other way yeah there we go so that works so that's good so now I just need to uh, put that mainspring back in which is not sure how tricky that is so there's a square on the barrel Again, like I told you, I'm more than likely going to take this apart again and clean the mainspring. I just want to see if it works or not. So I will put a dab of dew of oil on the mainspring. And, and not this stuff. I want the thinner stuff. So just a dab of dew on the, uh, on the center arbor of the mainspring. I'm not even going to put, I'm going to put super thin stuff on there. And this is uh, just allow it to move a bit, and then I'm going to put some of this in the uh, in the hole here as well. It's stuck to and a little on the teeth, a little on the teeth. There we go. Hopefully, I don't that doesn't bite me later on with that oil in there. But that's that. So there we go, and then that goes. So you just line the square part of that of the arbor. And I look where that square part is. Put the square part here. It should go right somewhere around there. And as it go as it goes in. And then it has to sit in the uh, has to sit in there. And I think what I used to do or what I can do is turn turn this a bit. So that it, there we go. So it just fell in place. So I just turn this with a bench key until that part that catches the arbor falls in place. And I just want to see if this thing works. So I'm getting a little bit anxious here. So I'm going to add a little bit of Jiffy Lube on the end of this one too. And that should, that's good there. And now I want to remove. I want to switch these around, these screws around, because I don't think this one belongs here. It belongs on the other side. So I'm going to just take this out and then very carefully take the other one out without. I got my glasses on here, and I know I'm going to hit the camera again with my head. So. Take this crazy blue screwed out that I'm going to replace later because that's kind of hopeless. And then put this one back where it belongs. I think I still have some erotica on the 
tweezers. Put this one here. Use the proper screwdriver like that and then once again I need to get my glasses out of the way. Alright, there we go. I want to make sure your screwdriver is in the center because if it's not you're going to scratch the movement and getting rid of a scratch in a movement is not an easy thing so now these screws actually come out after like so and then the uh, the plate for the mainspring goes on over it like that like so like that and then these screws go on over the plate uh, this blue screw was over here last time so I'll leave it there uh, like I said I'll replace that blue screw after because that looks so stupid somebody was just desperate to repair it but this is a railroad grade pocket watch and you don't want you want the parts to be good so if I were to have blue screws on this I'd make sure they're all blue screws not just one of them which is kind of nuts and I just want to see if this thing works so I'm going to put a little pressure on it wind it up a bit here and see if the uh, with the bench key and see if I get any action on the on the pallet fork like I did last time Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. That's 16. And then I just touch the pallet fork on the inside and see if it moves. Doesn't look like it's moving. Oh, there we go. I think it moved. It's hard to tell. I know I got all the, the wheels in the right place, so why is it not moving? Maybe because I got oil stuff? I have to look in, on the inside there and see what's going on. Because if it's, uh, if it's got pressure from the main mainspring, there's no why this there's no reason why this thing shouldn't move. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm moving this. There's a pinion here that looks like it's one of the pinions here looks mighty high. Looks like it's barely touching the uh, the wheel that it's supposed to be touching. That might be the problem there. So, just a pinion on the inside there. That's uh, you can see the pinions. There's one that's supposed to be touching the the wheel, the gears, and it looks like it's pretty high. So it may have to be punched down because it looks like there's quite a gap between the pinion where it should be and where it is. So I don't like that. So I'm gonna have a, turn that off and have a look at it think that could be a problem um, and then I'll look at the um, escapement and where it's hitting so it is you know what I think I'm a retard I think the wheel is backwards I am this friggin wheel right there is upside down oh my god stupid me well, I'm going to take it apart and put it back together again. All right, I'm back where I was before. <clears throat> I flipped that wheel around because I'm uh, stupid. And now I'm going to put the um, balance in and see exactly where that, whether it works or not. So it wants me to put it in right now. Which side do I want to put it in from? I'm going to put it in from... this side like this and then shift it over so let's see if this actually starts ticking 
this is without any work on the mounts I should take the screw off the top here alright there we go um, I'm going to grab it from this side here like this and then you just take that pallet fork and push it this way and then you're able and then you make sure that you're approaching it with the the impulse jewel on the side that you push the pallet fork so and then these guys here you just lower them like that and then you push them like this and with any luck I get some ticking going on Oh, that's pretty minor ticking, but still ticking is ticking, right? So that's good news. Um, let me put the screw down here and see if I can get some good action on this. Because it's just not lined up with the top pivot. So if I just add this screw here, it's probably going to be a lot better. Just screw down the... Uh, screw down the balance cock there we go and again when you're screwing the balance cock down make sure that there's that the pivot that you're not going to squish the uh, balance staff pivot up or lower so it's good to know that it's ticking like that and I put screw that down tight Let's see if I can get this thing moving it just needs to move now and it should be fine I'm gonna see what kind of an amplitude I get after this thing gets a bit of movement in it put some uh, oil on the top to allow that arbor to turn freely and like I said before I still have to do work on the balance here I haven't uh, haven't taken that apart and cleaned it it's a top jewel the bottom one's fine, I took that out as you saw, but the top one's probably pretty gummed up. So I need to take that out and clean it, and, but I probably will let this just run for the night. And I also need to move the wheel over here for the for timing it, So because it's definitely it's way over the end here, which is kind of shitty. And then, as you can see, it's moving nicely actually. Just move the wheel over like this and then tuck the uh, regulator arm on top of the wheel. So, not that exciting, is it? And once I've done that, basically I've got the movement running. So, no big issue there at all. So, just going to move some of the stuff out of the way and then grab the regulator arm just ever so slightly and lift it over the top here. I don't want it to bend, so I just have to move it like that. There we go. So it just slid into place. Um, now when I got this movement, or got this watch, the regulator arm was not in the right place. It was in the wrong place. So all I need to do is unscrew this, take these two screws out, clean the top, and then it's ready to rock and roll. But I'll do that later, so the video... Um, the watch is is running uh, it's running quite well right now um, maybe I can put it together so you can see what it looks like um, it's if I look at the uh, the back here as I get to do some oiling in the back as well and make sure you don't squish anything I guess the movement I don't like these movement holders these are terrible for these pocket watches vintage watches they tend to be just too aluminum like I want to get a nice uh, I gotta make sure the balance is clear of any problems I want to get a nice uh, brass movement holder for big pocket watches there we go I think that's in there yeah that's in there so and for this I want to put a bit of lubricant and various places so I want to put some lubricant in the base of the center wheel coming in like that All right um, 
I can lubricate the post of the of the minute hand right here. I also want to put some lubricant on the other end of this where the mainspring goes through. And then I want to and I'm going to put some lubricant where the springs are right there. Clean that up a bit with Rodico after. And right here. Oop, wrong lubricant. Hang on. Clean that up. And right where this spring is here, hold it back. And basically wherever there's friction, right, which is right here as well. And then I can put the cannon pinion back in place. Taken nicely, actually. And I like to actually push the cannon pinion down with a, uh, a stake so I can go straight down on it as opposed to at an angle. So I'm going to pick one of the bigger stakes that I got. This is a T bone stake. That was a joke. And put that over the top and then push the cannon pinion in place like that. And so that's in place. And then the uh, the minute wheel can go in there now, like that. I'm going to put a little bit of oil on the minute wheel as well, just a bit right there, and that'll spread. And I'm going to put just a bit of oil on the outside of the cannon pinion too, like that. Get rid of that oil, and then I want to oil. The pivots on the other side before I put this back together because I don't think anything was oiled yet so that's probably why it's not flipping around really fast so remember the thinner the um, the less friction the less the lighter the oil the greater the friction the greater the oil I'm just holding my breath when I'm doing this. <laughs> Don't know why, but I am. So that's that. And then put the hour wheel back in. Like that. That's nice, nicely in there. And this did not come, I repeat, this did not come with a, a washer for the hour wheel. I don't remember if I have any washers I can put on there that would help, but but it didn't come with a washer for the hour wheel. Maybe it's not supposed to. And then the face would go on, or goes on. There's no wood involved. And all you do is line up the second, the pivot for the second hand and go straight down. Like that. And it should find out where the legs are. The dial legs, there they are there. Make sure you can see the pivot all through the top, otherwise you're gonna squish something. So I'm going to take that out again, line that up like so, like this, and then drop it down. And I definitely can see that. There we go. So that's down. I may have to get a, uh, I may have to get a uh, dial washer for that. But I may grab my screwdriver to uh, screw down the, the uh, screws for the, for the face and where are the screws anyway there's one there that's tight and there's one right here on the side and again I get the camera in the way so I'm trying to do this in an awkward way just showing you how it's done I'm gonna put my finger down on the face for a second but I'll clean it off after That's there, that's tight, and there should be one more. There it is there. And I'm trying to get the angle of the screwdriver here. And that's tight. There we go. And I know I touched it in a few places, so I'm going to just clean those off right now. 
just shine the light on it and I can see where I touched it. Alright, so that's good there. And then I need to, I'm going to put the uh, second hand back on first. Usually you just have to plop this on the edge and then away you go. It's got a little bit of erotico on here to clean it up a bit. There was a hair on it. Get rid of that hair. The hair is definitely not from me. I lost my hairs a while back. They left me. This thing looks like it's squished. Looks like somebody squished the uh, the second hand I put this on. I don't think it's the second hand that comes with it. There. That's squished. That is one shitty second hand. I'm going to look at it again and yeah, that's been squished. Or maybe it's supposed to be like this. I don't freaking know. Let me just try that again. What I don't want to do is break the pivot on the wheel. Because you can put too much pressure on the on the wheel and break that pivot. And that is not something you want to do because that'll... There, I pushed it down. It definitely was squished on, so maybe the amazing squisher was working on this watch and decided to squish the pivot down on there. I uh, don't know if I've ever introduced you to the amazing squisher, but that'd be somebody who would squish stuff. And then this is the... Uh, This is the hour wheel that goes on first. Make sure it's lined up properly so I don't push down on and, and nothingville. Having fun here. Looks like it's not on or something. I don't know. This is a weird looking. Oh, there we go. Now it's down. And I'm going to use the bigger uh, pusher for this and make sure I get enough angle there so it goes over the second hand. I think that's, and it's a drop, it's a sunken second hand, which is great. It's not quite at 12 o'clock, so I'll push this over so that's not quite at that angle. And let me look at that. Oh man, thing of beauty. So I think I got this in nicely. Rise that up just a bit. You got to make sure the angles on here. You can play it back and forth or up and down, but you got to make sure the angles are perfect on there. And I don't remember if I touched the case again, but I don't think I did. So let me get the case here. Um, I've got too many cases going on here. This is the case here, so I think that just slides in. So I'm going to slide that baby in. Just loosen this up a bit. Yeah, it's working a lot better now, actually. Ticking away. Just ticking away. So i got to find out. I don't know if this is Hunter or not. I can't remember whether this was a Hunter movement. But there's the uh, there's where it goes in like that. So it would go in on this side. I believe... That's where the screws are, so it's going in like this. So find the uh, find it like this, and then you tuck it in like that. And then there's going to be some screws. And in this case here, there wasn't one here, so I'm going to have to find another one later. But this one goes right here. So you put those in right away. And I have another fingerprint on this baby again, so I'm going to have to deal with that. I believe I touched the face again and got another fingerprint on it. And I don't want to slip the screwdriver again. Is that in? I don't know. Looks kind of not in on this side. Needs to go down a bit on this side, I think. Or maybe not. Looks relatively flat.
Let me see. Man, I need to, I need to put another screw in here because this sucks. This sucks. I'm gonna loosen this up here a little. Oh, there we go. It slid into place. Oh, there we go. And then there's there should be another screw in there. And get the rod out because I touched it again. I touched it right here. And I need I'm gonna put the uh, the case on here so I stop touching it. Let me just set the time really fast. So time is ten it's four o'clock. Four o'clock. Let's see if this sets. Yes it does. Four o'clock. This hand's a bit high. I want to see if I can push that down a bit. It looks a bit high. No, it's a bit low. Now, is that going over the other hand nicely? I think it is. Yeah, four o'clock. Man, I did a good job setting the hands. I'm getting very good at that. And I'm going to put the crystal on here. Come on, get on. Get on. Okay, there we go. Crystal's on. Yeah, there we go. Now I can turn it around. So, I need to find a screw for this. I'm going to pause it while I dig for screws. So I found a screw, but it needs a washer. Well, I got it like the Department of a Million Screws here. So, the D-O-M-S, Department of a Million Screws. Anyway, I found a screw here I'm using a click spring because I can't find the right screw but this click spring fits in here not good enough to perhaps get this thing this this screw which seems to go down in the right place but I probably need a washer of some sort because this is kind of stupid but I'm going to go for stupid for now and see if, this, if I can get any grip on this thing. Uh, I'll use this and I'll replace it later. Is this gripping at all? No. There's no grip. There is no grip. That's too big. It is way too big. So don't use the click spring, you moron. Can't use the click spring. Not good. I got a thing of tons of parts here that I'm going to look through here and see if I can find the right part to shove in there as well. I really need. All right, I found the world's smallest tab. These are usually used for watches, but I'll see if I can just throw this in and then rotate it after. Come on, get in there. Is that not going in? I need to basically rotate it while it's sitting on the thing here. This is crazy. I need to screw the screw into the screw. Let's see if I can screw the screw into the screw and then use that tab. Until I can find the proper friggin spring. Well, there we go. So it's in there now. And I just rotate this guy over like a little tab. And I gotta get closer, but I can't. Rotate it over and then up. And then it just works like a tab. There we go. So it's on the outside of that. And if I can hold that in place, I can use that as a tab and then call it a night. Again, not sure if I'll get any. No, I'm not getting any uh, grip on this on the threads of this thing at all. No, it's too deep. Waste of time. Put the damn thing together. Forget it. Forget it. Get the proper friggin' screw. Anyway, it'll probably hold for now. I'm gonna put the top on here. Nice watch. 
that's the end of my video. I'm recommending it fast forward through all this crap because um, I can't clip it, I don't think. So maybe I can edit it. Anyway, put the back on nice and tight. There's the front, and it is running a little slow, I think. 14, yeah, it's running a little bit slow. So I'll have to speed this up after, but there's the Elgin, or Elgin um, pocket watch, mint condition, um, thing of beauty. Uh, that is a, a railroad grade pocket watch. I need to put these screws away. Anyway, see you later. Thanks for watching. Take care.